Welcome to another episode of Women Who Work. This episode is all about multitasking moms. The question I always ask, can women have it all? Well, these women have it all and they're doing it all. Today's show, we have Nicole Reitzel, who's the development director of the Erie Zoo, Nadine Leach, owner and operator of Handle With Care Child Care, India Henderson, who's also the director and owner of At Your Service Cleaning Service, and Kim Thomas, who is the director of the Northwest PA Department of Development and Economic Services. And we have April Sweeney, who is a nurse practitioner at St. Vincent's Medical Group. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. All my guests are, of course, mothers, which is our show today. And they all have wonderful children, and they are all doing it all. They are doing things in our community. They are making a difference, and they are working. As you know, work is our term that we use here, and it is someone who is doing something to an exceedingly excellent capacity. And these ladies um, really embody that I body that definition and they're all women that I admire so I'm glad to have them on the show. Thanks for coming ladies. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to go right into our questions. Our first one is um, what are the challenges that you face being a mother and um, having your children and just being able to do everything all at once? Time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do you want to yeah. elaborate on that India? Time. Just a time to get everything done without neglecting the time that your children need from you because you still have to be a mother, but you still have to get these things done. So it's, it's just time. Definitely. Time to have five or 10 minutes to yourself before you go to bed at night. Okay. Time Without is a big tomorrow's issue. menu going through your head or what Repeatedly. you have to do tomorrow or what you have coming up you know, in the next couple of days. It's just time. It's making the most of the 18 hours or whatever that you're awake. Just being I able agree. To manage all of that mm -hmm. time, and mm -hmm. you know, if you have to be at work from eight thirty to five or whatever the hours are, and making sure you know one child is at school by seven forty-five, and maybe another mm -hmm. one doesn't go till you know later on, just making sure they're where they need to be on time, so that mm -hmm. you can get to where you need to be on time. Yeah, I agree. Time is a big issue. Um, mm -hmm. Quality time as well. Mm -hmm. You know, with the kids, that's important too. Not just time, quality time, managing that. In addition to work, yeah. you know, and lo lots and lots of work. <laughs> right, you know, I agree. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I think you're always kind of um, managing sometimes competing priorities. You want to be mm -hmm. good at everything you do. You want to have a great marriage and be a great parent and do a great job at work and, you know, have your health be great and your family's health be great. Right. And sometimes those. Um, priorities compete with each other a little bit, so mm -hmm. that's a, that's mm -hmm. tough. That's my challenge. So we're mm -hmm. talking about time management, which mm -hmm. everyone brought up. Um, what are some tips that you can share or tricks that you use to maximize your time that you can share with some other moms? I schedule everything for the most part. Um, uh, on my phone, I put, put a marker right on my calendar so I know what I have to do and days coming up, trips that we have to take. You know, I try to plan ahead as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it takes some time to kind of figure out what mm -hmm. kind of a routine you need to be in. Right. But once mm -hmm. you get that set, um, knowing how long it's going to take you to get yourself ready to get going, mm -hmm. how long it takes to get the kids ready, and then, you know, tack on another 30 minutes or right. an hour because something's right. going to go wrong in that time period, more than likely. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, just being able, like you said, to be able to schedule it all out, block it all out as best as you can, mm -hmm. and just be willing to know that there's going to be some roadblocks probably throughout mm -hmm. that schedule. Right. Too. Mm -hmm. Sure. I start my day really early. That's probably the biggest <laughs> tip I have. <laughs> so if you want to, you know, have some time to, for, to yourself or to organize your day, I s usually start at five or five fifteen, mm -hmm. which isn't just you know discipline <laughs> and willpower. I have, That's hard. I, can't I, ha do I have a one-year-old who wakes up at that time anyway, mm -hmm. so okay. it's sort of okay. forced, but it yeah. works out pretty well for me. Mm -hmm. so. April, do you have any tips? I have a dry erase board at home, mm -hmm. and each child has a different color. And I have a different color, and my husband. And then I can I just plot out the whole month um, for softball games, mm -hmm. football practice, baseball games, my husband's appointments. Um, if I'm working an extra shift somewhere else, um, because my shift right now, it my shifts, my current job is strictly it's Monday through Friday. Um, but if I'm picking up somewhere else, um, I will mark that you know in my color so that I don't forget. I am a good list maker of mm -hmm. things that I want to get done either that day or within that coming week. 
um, maybe projects I want to start. So I'm just very, I'm visually oriented, so I need to see things and need to see where I need to be at certain times, certain days. Um, and having that dry erase board helps me know which days out of the week are going to be the most hectic. <laughs> so. Now, um, we may have some moms that are watching or some people that are like, okay, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. And it may be too good to be true. Um, Cause I know me, I try to plan. Mm -hmm. And um, even as an event planner, like I'm good planning other people's things, but mm -hmm. my personal thing don't go as well. Like a dry erase board is not what happened in my house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I do like schedule everything in my phone, but then there's like a calendar mm -hmm. somewhere else where those things right. don't mesh. And then mm -hmm. like today I was even late, truthfully, I was late today, okay? like my guests were here before me. So just to be realistic, like you guys had to have gotten here through trial and error. So is there anything mm -hmm. like you can even like speak to that for people who are like, okay, one day I want to get there, but right now that's not it. My house is crazy. Mm -hmm. My life is crazy. So how can we get to that step eventually to being organized? But right now that's not my thing. So you, you were just peeking into my household. Is that, <laughs> <laughs> that was going on? Uh, no, one, of, one, of, one thing I will say, um, two things I like giving yourself extra time mm -hmm. and yes everything does need to be written down or however you do it I can't do the phone because I'll never look at it and then I'll say oh no it'll pop up like mm -hmm. in five minutes you have to be somewhere <laughs> yeah, I, what? Always, I always push the envelope mm -hmm. you know I'm like I'm looking like for today I'm looking at the clock and I'm like mm, it'll take me that's the amount of time to get there <laughs> and then you know at work I do it all the time and mm -hmm. you know I I stay till the last minute, you know, yeah. and it throws my schedule off a little bit, but mm -hmm. that's just how it goes. Yeah. But I found, too, that um, some of my lists that I make, I don't, you know, clear them out. You know, I don't mm -hmm. delete stuff, but I check stuff off. Mm -hmm. And it kind of helps me, I guess it's mentally, mm -hmm. to keep me motivated. Yeah, it's because, accomplished. Yeah, mm -hmm. because those things right. that, because the list, it continuously grows. It never gets completely checked off. So now, if, if I don't, you know, check this thing off and leave it there, mm -hmm. then I'll just continuously forever always have a long list of things that are not done. Mm -hmm. So with the check marks, it's showing, okay, this much of my day. I've completed 40% of what I need to get done. And that kind of helps me to stay motivated to keep track because sometimes I need to take a look back like, oh, okay, well, I did get things, <laughs> I did get things done today. Yeah. For some, oh, go, go ahead. ahead, no, please, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, to answer your question too, I think sometimes we as women need to give ourselves a little bit of grace. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if there's a t season in life when things are crazy, things, inevitably do fall off the plate you know when your kids are little or up half the night or you know maybe the house doesn't get cleaned or maybe you have takeout for dinner or maybe and I think that that's just okay sometimes if you go to bed and your kids are happy and healthy and the important things are taken care of you just kind of yeah. mm -hmm. float go with the rest so I agree and that's why I force those five ten minutes at the end of the day mm -hmm. in my mind I'm like you really could be clean and living with those ten minutes. <laughs> But I have to take them for my own, for, my, for myself. Mm -hmm. And you know, that goes with, that may be the one thing that fell off of the plate that day. But mm -hmm. on my checklist, there's so many other things mm -hmm. that I've completed, so it's, mm -hmm. it's okay. Mine was like, I think mine was trial and error. And I, my kids were, my kids have always just been so busy um, that I had to develop a way to know what am I doing today? Who needs to be where? Yep. And I agree. like I said, I'm just, I'm visual. And I tried many other ways. I tried just keeping it in my brain and I failed miserably. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just for me, it's just that color, you know, that color scheme, dry erase board that Selena doesn't like, it works. <laughs> and I can, I can glance at it before I walk out the front door and I know what I have to do, and I know what time I have mm -hmm. to be somewhere. So I try to plan my day around that. Yeah, I think you but just have to know that it's not going to be perfect. It's not yeah. going to be easy. It's going to be exhausting. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like she was saying, you're not going to get absolutely every single thing that you could possibly do done. Mm -hmm. But just know that you're kind of taking care of the priorities and making sure your kids are okay and that you are also okay. But there's going to yeah. still be times, whether you're organized and have mm -hmm. a list um, or not, that you're running out late that, mm -hmm. you know, 
kids are going to be wanting to know what's for dinner when you literally just walked in the door. <laughs> right. So there's always going to be something that's going to be yeah. kind of chaotic. Absolutely. Now, what's that one myth about motherhood um, that you wish people would either stop asking or telling you or expecting? Um, because sometimes expectations are great or you hear mm -hmm. things that people um, try to tell you about how you should be raising your children mm -hmm. that you just wish would just disappear, that you could never ever hear again. Is there one that you guys like to share? And I thought about this. Yeah. And I <laughs> well, I'm, I think just that whole idea of having it all, mm -hmm. um, I think that that's a myth, um, not to say that you can't necessarily have it all, but usually not at the same time. <laughs> so I, I think kind of the idea that everything, you know, you can have everything in your life and be great at everything um, mm -hmm. is not always the case. So it might set some unrealistic expectations. Mm -hmm. I guess me with my children, mm -hmm. um, everybody has their own idea of what your routine should be like. And there's times that I have to let my kids stay up because I haven't seen them all day. You know, no, I'm not rushing them off to bed. Yeah, bedtime yeah. has passed, but um, they actually just ate. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it might have been cereal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, and, yeah. And I'm still going to take those couple minutes up with them mm -hmm. past their bedtime after I fed them way too late to, you know, hear about their day. Mm -hmm. So the, the myth of the routine, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. how strict it has to be, if, 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 if it was going to be like that, I wouldn't be able to work like I do. Yeah. So. That it is a routine. It's not, there's no routine to, like some days we'll eat at six o'clock and some days we eat at 8.30 and it's just, right. you know, it's <laughs> just the way it is. And I, my mother made motherhood look so easy and I think <laughs> that's a myth. It's not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> it's the hardest job in the world. It's, I mean, and I would absolutely agree. I think the biggest mm -hmm. myth is that it is easy. You mm -hmm. know, people, I think society nowadays just expects you to be able to separate your home life from your professional mm -hmm. life. And with the, you know, exact hours that you're expected to work, you know, trying to, trying to be able to schedule your family life right. mm -hmm. outside of that when some of it might be intertwined with that professional time. Um, I think there needs to just be, um, some room for flexibility. I think that that's yeah. a big thing mm -hmm. when you're a working mother, working parent um, in general, just to be able to to take care of all of your needs, whether they're mm -hmm. professional or personal. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good segue into the next question because I had asked you guys, like, how do you maintain an identity separate from being a mother? Um, because I, I do have some friends with that, that's it for them. It's just, you know, their identity is within them being a mother. Um, nothing else happens outside of being mom. Um, they don't have anything to do for their own escape. They don't have anything that they do for their own personal relaxation or just anything. Um, so do you have an identity outside of being mom and things that you like to do or anything that you do to even maintain that? Or is that even possible, I guess? That's kind of a loaded question. <laughs> I really don't, but it's not a bad thing mm -hmm. because I enjoy what I do with my family. Um, not saying that I don't, I don't have an identity outside of it, it's just that I enjoy my family, you know, and um, my peace time is with my kids and my family. So, I mean, that's good for me, it works for me. Mm -hmm. You know, others might disagree, but yeah. I enjoy the basketball games, I enjoy mm -hmm. the track meets, I enjoy traveling with them, you know, mm -hmm. for tournaments. And we like seeing the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I enjoy it. Um, I do have um, things that I like to do, but, you know, I don't do them as much. Um, but that's my choice because I choose that, mm -hmm. you know. So. Yeah, I would think all of us, you know, sitting here would have some sort of an identity other than right. just being a mother because we're all involved um, within mm -hmm. our careers yeah. and within our community. So I think, um, I think, and I'm speaking for all of us, which I probably shouldn't <laughs> be, but, um, you know, when we step out into the community or we're out working mm -hmm. or at an event or whatever the case might be, I think uh, maybe people may see us as our, our identity might be what our career is. It might not be so much as being a mom. Um, but then you have to, you know, some people who might not be a parent, um, their work hours never end. They may mm -hmm. 
work on holidays, work right. weekends. But as a working parent, you have to make sure that you're able to cut that off at some point. So I think I would I would think each of us probably does have an identity outside of being a mother because of our roles in the community. It took for my daughter to let me know that I didn't have one. <laughs> <laughs> like, get it, get a life, mom. <laughs> and so now I'm, I'm kind of walking into that now. Now I'm figuring out a little bit more of who I am outside of, because I'll, I'll kind of lump together, you know, me working and my children, because it all just kind of meshes uh -huh. together. Mm -hmm. And like we, and I keep bringing up that few minutes alone, yeah. that alone time for me. Yeah, I'm starting to get back to, you know, that identity I have. Mm -hmm. But, you know, once you have children, it changes you anyway. Yeah. It does. So, yeah. But we evolve. We're people. We evolve. Right. So things change. I take time, um, and it's not, it's not even, it wasn't for myself in the beginning. Um, I started taking our son to a trainer. Um, he is an avid football player. Um, and he loves basketball and we started I started taking him to a gym and I would wait there with him and there's always been a part of me you know that wanted to get back into that girl that I was that younger girl that I was before I had kids mm -hmm. you know and um, I said well instead of just sitting here I'm going to I'm going to participate and I started and now a year and a half later I'm addicted I'll take a week off here and there where I don't go because my time doesn't allow me to go and but in the back of my mind it's like I have to get back to the gym I have to get back to the gym because it is a wonderful and wonderful stress reliever for me mm -hmm. and I find when I'm not at that gym and I'm not there working out and being with the friends that I've made there, um, everything starts to hurt. You know, like my neck will start to bother me, my back will start to bother me. So the stress that I incur on a daily basis is starting to build up, where I just take it out on the free weights and the treadmill and the stairs. And my son and I, we do something together, but separately. Mm -hmm. So I'm still with him. So it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I love it. Well, we've been having some great dialogue this far. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back right after this. Before NAMI, I did not have many support systems. I felt very alone. Through NAMI, I earned a support system. I earned advocacy. I earned an organization that I could refer others to and advocate for mental illness with and through NAMI I feel that I can help stamp out stigma. NAMI of Erie County. Find help. Find hope. I will not be news today. I will not make headlines by going through a bad girl phase where I get that bad girl haircut where they shave just one side of your head. And I will hey, not bring a Komodo dragon as my plus one to an award show, even though that would be awesome. I'm Olivia Munn, and I will not be trending today because there's a much bigger story that needs to be heard. We're back with our multi-tasking moms panel, and um, we're going to pick back up with 
where we kind of left off, but we're going to switch gears and talk a little bit about um, some legislative legislation, excuse me, that's been going on lately um, in regards to equal pay and um, maternity leave um, that a lot of conversation has been going on about. And just ask the ladies, like, what you think about that. Um, you know, equal pay is definitely mm -hmm. something that I know all of us uh, may not have even realized has been a, a big issue when we get our mm -hmm. paychecks, but it's definitely something that women definitely make less than men. Mm -hmm. And um, some of us probably would like to see a longer maternity leave pay if any of us are even thinking about having more children. <laughs> but um, right now, I think most of it is six weeks is usually the typical um, pay. Some states have usually ha are looking to do longer. Mm -hmm. In some areas, they do have about 12 weeks now where they're able to stay, but um, typically it's usually the six weeks. Um, how do you feel about that as being moms? Um, I know it's hard to go back to work once you've had mm -hmm. a new one. Um, what's your stance on that? Anyone mm -hmm. want to speak to it? Well, I think, first of all, in Pennsylvania, it's not required that employers offer paid maternity leave mm -hmm. at all, which is it's kind of unfathomable if all mm -hmm. of us here, I know myself, I was fortunate mm -hmm. enough to have employers that offered paid maternity leave. Mm -hmm. um, so first of all, I think that situation kind of needs to be rectified because if mm -hmm. you have a mother who may be working part-time or has an employer who doesn't offer paid maternity leave, then what do you do? How do you, how do you plan for that? You've got a newborn baby and a completely new lifestyle for, for a new mother at least. How do, you, how do you plan for that? And you can't just throw a newborn baby into daycare or have a mm -hmm. babysitter. You need that bonding time with your child. So first of all, I think that needs to be taken mm -hmm. care of. I know there is legislation out there to require maternity leave in the state, but I think that's kind of one of the first things that needs to happen. I know we had to use any accrued vacation time. If you wanted to get paid, if you didn't have vacation time, or you didn't have sick time, you didn't get paid. And, you know, so you went your whole pregnancy hoping that, one, you wouldn't get sick, or two, you wouldn't have, you know, complications before you even had the baby. Um, and I, th I think I had my kids before FMLA came about. Mm -hmm. So I went, I was back at six weeks. Mm -hmm. So my kids are a little bit older. But. Well, I just had a baby six months mm -hmm. ago. <laughs> 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 and, um, the position that I was in, well, I, I graduated from Gannon two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, entrepreneurship was my major. And um, so my plan was to start my business. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I was getting things ready and then I got pregnant. And I was actually working two part-time jobs. So mm -hmm. when it came down time to have the baby, there was nothing. Mm -hmm. And for seven weeks after, nothing. there was nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I can say that it's rough. You have to try to anticipate what it's going to cost you. Right. You have to prepare for a child that's coming. And you have to, you know, prepare your, your bills. Mm -hmm. So anybody that's in a position where they're working um, somewhere, full time, you know, mm -hmm. they should they should definitely be allowed time to bond with their child and they should definitely, definitely be paid. Absolutely. I mean, when you hired me, you knew I was a woman and you knew that right. it's a possibility that I could have a baby. But apparently, well, obviously, mm -hmm. from my credentials, um, you felt it was still worth hiring me. Mm -hmm. So you should prepare yourself for the fact that if I do get pregnant, I'm going to need to be paid, and I'm going to need to need I'm going to need to have bonding time with my child. Right. So yes, I agree mm -hmm. that um, that's something that that you should have. And mm -hmm. six weeks, I would have been grateful for six weeks to be honest with you. Wow. But twelve weeks would be great. Too. <laughs> <laughs> or a year. <laughs> or a year would be good. Yeah, and t I guess to answer the first part of your question about um, equal pay, I think it's hard. I think as women, we have a hard time sometimes demonstrating and articulating the value that we bring to the marketplace, the value mm -hmm. we bring to our jobs. So to be able to say, you know, I am worth X amount because of this is sometimes mm -hmm. a hard thing for women to do. So I think we all need to take a little ownership of, you know, being able to step up and, but you know, show time, how much we at the value. same time, we shouldn't have to mm -hmm. do that. It should already be across the board, right. you know, 
It we should be. be. Yeah. For the pos mm -hmm. If it's the same position, then we should get mm -hmm. paid the same amount of money. But I do understand what you mean. But um, it's unfair, and we should get paid, you know, mm -hmm. equal amount if we're doing the right. job. Mm -hmm. It's definitely something, um, and we brought it up too in our March episodes um, because it was Women's History Month. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that we're still fighting for and definitely something that hopefully um, by the time our children, especially our daughters, um, are of working age, mm -hmm. that it will no, no longer be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, as we move forward, still talking kind of along the lines of re rearing children, um, this was not one of the questions I asked you guys to prepare for, <laughs> but it's just something I want to ask. Um, I know now that I'm a mother, I hear a lot of people say, um, I hear myself, I should say, saying, and even when I was home long, not long ago, I found myself saying and doing things that my mom mm -hmm. said and did <laughs> to me as a child. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> um, I can't believe that. And I would always say like, I'm not gonna do that when I'm a mother, I'm not gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself like, you know, using some of the same child rearing styles that your parents use in your children? And mm -hmm. um, um, I had a one. I, I have a wonderful mom. Sorry, <laughs> I have a wonderful mother, and um, but I I raised my children a little differently um, than how my mother raised us. She was a wonderful mom. I had a wonderful um, family, but um, now it's more of I let them be more of themselves instead of telling mm -hmm. them. My mom would tell us, you know, mm -hmm. do this, do that. I give them the opportunity to do something first before I just tell them what you know what I before I just tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not as strict as my mother was, mm -hmm. um, and and my kids are they're well adjusted. I, mm -hmm. I have to say, I have some good kids, <laughs> and, you know. Um, and my mother was strict on um, uh, me and my brother, mm -hmm. but you know, at the end, we're turning out to be productive yeah. people, my children and myself. So. Right. We don't have to be like our moms, you know, as far as raising our kids. Um, and we could be if we wanted to, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's, it's different now. Mm -hmm. Times are different now, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and, um, and we just adjust to that. Right. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. definitely a different world. Mm -hmm. You know, just like you said, it's, it's a lot different. The core principles, all of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have all of the, the core principles that my mom used in, um, in raising us. But the world, the world has changed. I feel kind of like you, you said about giving, the, I give my kids way more cho choices because right. mm -hmm. they live in a world where they need to explore. Because you know, it's not where you grow up, you go to school, you get this job, mm -hmm. you work there for 30 years, right. you retire, you move to Florida. <laughs> it's not like that anymore. Yeah. You have to make your own way. And if I'm stifling, you know, the parts of them that I feel, oh no, that's not mm -hmm. good, or oh right. no, that's not right, no, this right. is what you should do. If I'm stifling that, then I might be cutting off the road that they actually need to take to get to their own success. Mm -hmm. It's just a different world. And yeah. Like I said, we, we evolve, mm -hmm. but I yeah. keep those core yeah. principles. But they still, they have to be home by the time the street lights. <laughs> 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 that, that's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, I mean, I definitely find myself saying some of the same things that my parents said, and I um, probably lean in the sort of authoritative parenting style, mm -hmm. like I was raised, but then question myself and think, you know, gosh, is saying, well, do it because I said so. That's mm -hmm. probably not the right <laughs> message to be right. saying, but, but that's what I was told, and that's what kind of comes yeah. naturally out of my mouth. But, you know, so I'm always trying to think about, you know, what's best and try to adjust, so. Okay. And while we're talking about core values um, that our parents still us, what are some of the core values that you're passing on to your children and hoping that they um, actually are holding on to and practicing? God first. Definitely. God first, faith, family, and everything else will fall into place. Okay. But God first. Definitely, and uh, their <laughs> morals, keep mm -hmm. them. <laughs> I don't care what the world shows you as you continue to grow up and you get into the workforce, you're gonna see a lot of different things that go completely against what I taught you. 
-hmm. and it will appear as if the people who don't have any morals are the ones who are the successes. Mm -hmm. But you still have to hold on to that. You have to hold on to that. You'll succeed, mm -hmm. and it may be at a slower pace, but you have to hold on to that. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. Also, um, you know, when um, when we were younger, you know, our parents, you know, straight straight A's or honor card was, right. you know, like a must, right. you know. But now with me, it's do your best. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's do your best. Like I put on Facebook my son's report card. It wasn't straight A's, it, mm -hmm. and they all weren't B's. There were some C's in there, but mm -hmm. it was his best, and I was very proud of him. Yes. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I so, tell my yeah. children, if a C is the best you can do, I will celebrate it like, and it's, like it's an A. Right. Mm -hmm. But if it's not the best, right. and that's what you're bringing, then we're going to have a problem. Right. <laughs> but if it is your best, I will mm -hmm. celebrate it like mm -hmm. it like it's an A. Right. And I tell my son, you know, my nine-year-old, he's on a basketball team, and he's like, Mom, those kids, they curse, you know? <laughs> and, you know, when, of course, when the adults aren't around, you know? And, and, I, and I said to him, Amari, well, you know right from wrong, and you know mm -hmm. that it's not right. You're not supposed to do that. Right. And he's like, I know, Mom, I know. I, I get away from them when I hear them, you know? <laughs> so, but the kids do listen to us. We, sometimes we think they don't hear us, but they listen. And um, it's just important that we keep talking. Right. Yeah, because it's tough yeah. to be a child these days. It mm -hmm. really is. It really is. Especially as yes. they get into their middle school mm -hmm. years and their high school years, it's tough to be a child. So it as is. long as they do know right from wrong right. and to be kind to one another yes. regardless of mm -hmm. what the situation is, um, I think it's very important to instill that in them as well. Right. And I think I keep the dialogue, you know, a lot more open than my mother did. What she did worked for us. Mm -hmm. This is it, that's that. You know, mm -hmm. but for the things that my kids are seeing in school, I have to keep it open. Mm -hmm. I have to listen to every story mm -hmm. yes. when they come home. <laughs> yes. I have to listen to every story that my son makes up because I believe he's going to be a writer. <laughs> and I have, to, I have to listen because in the middle of this big, long thing is going to be one little tiny thing tiny that I needed to hear, mm -hmm. right. that I needed to hear. And I'll have to rewind it back. Mm -hmm. And then I end up, you know, helping them with something I never would have known had I told him to be quiet because I was tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I try to just remember that saying that more is caught than taught. And so I try mm. to be what mm. I want for my kids to be. My yeah. three year old said to me the other day, he said, Thank you for saying, oh my gosh, mommy, like you should. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. I thought, okay, it's a good thing I did. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Well, as we close out this last question, um, part of the show, um, the premise of it was to showcase women that were, you know, people knew in the community and people that didn't, but also to show another side of the women um, that are on each panel in each episode um, for you to share something that most people really don't know about you and so this last question it asks you know what is something that you have struggled or um, was a triumph in your life that helped shape you into the woman or the mother that you are today that may help um, any of the mothers or even mothers to be that are watching this episode mm -hmm. um, I think uh, financial responsibility is very important for anyone but more so for um, for women, mm -hmm. you have to be um, knowledgeable of your finances, um, your savings, what you're saving for the future. It's very important to, um, to start that as early as possible for yourself. Um, you have your own business. Um, I didn't always have a, um, a savings plan for myself, you know, but it's very important that um, you uh, become financially knowledgeable of, mm -hmm. you know, your money. Mm -hmm. that was, that's important for me. Yeah. Very. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would just say that just know that you're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to have to forgive yourself for those mistakes that you make and know that um, at the end of the day, as long as you're doing what is best for yourself and your children, uh, and your family, then then that's all that you can do. And there's going to be a lot of road bumps along the way. You might not know what's going to 
be in front of you tomorrow, but as long as you're able to teach your kids and be there for your children um, and for yourself and to, again, make that time for yourself, then you should be okay. People probably wouldn't um, know that I struggle with depression. Um, I struggled with postpartum depression after each of my children. Um, it is real. Um, there is help. And um, I, did go, I was on medication for a long time. Um, I did go to therapy. And between those, between a combination, between the combination of both of those, I overcame my depression. Um, I still do have situational depression, um, but I'm no longer on medication. Um, I would go back to talk therapy in a heartbeat because we need somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. And it's not our husbands, and it's not our sisters, mm -hmm. and it's not our mothers. We need a stranger. We need somebody that we don't know to sit with us, have coffee with us, and just say, this is how I feel, this is what happened. And because mental health is just as important as physical health. Absolutely. Yes. It is. I agree. I think that um, what I've learned through becoming a mother is I think that it's really strengthened my faith um, because I think that it's hard. <laughs> and there's mm -hmm. so many times when you kind of question yourself and think, okay, am I, is this the right thing? Is this the right decision? Am I saying the right thing? And so it just kind of helps me to sort of trust in God a little bit more and say, you know what, I don't have all the answers, but you do. <laughs> so <laughs> to kind of, that's, that's been something that I've learned from becoming a mother for sure. I think one of the things that kind of shaped me uh, was I only went back to school for entrepreneurship. I went back to school because my daughter had asthma and I lost like three jobs. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm going to go to school now <laughs> till we figure this out. And while I was in there, it was a struggle. And at the end, I was pregnant and I was told you know, by a few professors that I don't think you're going to make it because you're, you're struggling. Mm -hmm. And I had to push. And when I walked the stage, mm -hmm. that's when it hit me. Mm -hmm. I can do anything. Yeah. I can do anything. But it took for the roughest time of my life. And I probably suffered from depression at that time, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, it took for that roughest time for me to understand that I can do anything. That doesn't mean I'll never fail, mm -hmm. um, but I can, as long as I continue to push, I can do anything. But you get back up when you fall down. That's right. That's oh, I important. failed plenty, mm -hmm. but I just get I just get right back up. Mm -hmm. Just keep it going. <laughs> Well, thank you for so much for sharing today, ladies. I appreciate you taking time out of your day, not only sharing with me, but for all of our viewing audience. Um, you guys are phenomenal women. And the takeaway from today is not only can you do anything, but it's not about doing it all. It's doing it to the best of your ability, as we heard today. Moms definitely are a gift from God. So re remember to call your mom today and say thank you. If she's not living, um, God bless you and bless your family. But thank God for your mom. Um, it's not about being a multitasking mom and doing it a perfect way because there's no formula of doing it greatly and there's no formula of being perfect. But whoever your mom is and if you are a mom, you're perfect for your family. And that's the best way that you can do is to do it to your best ability and be all you can be for your family. So again, we thank you for watching. Tune in again for our next episode of Women Who Work. Have a blessed day.